Okay, good. I am live. All right, awesome. Good to see you guys. What's going on? It's Mike from WithMyAssOff.com. And I believe I'm doing this fairly correctly in the sense that um, I don't think I've screwed anything up just yet. <laughs> uh, the speed tests that I've done tell me that I'm getting basically 80 down and 40 up, believe it or not. And I'm right here. Actually, I'm looking at that. You guys are looking at there too. And, um, and so what I believe this means is that I am live on YouTube and Twitch and, uh, and obviously Aztecs there. So good morning. And that means we are live on YouTube, gentlemen. So I'm totally stoked you guys are here. Greetings and aloha. What's going on? It's Mike's from livemyassoff.com. I am at, uh, what's referred to as, uh, uh, let me just make sure I get the pronunciation of it. Tom Pang Beach. And uh, good morning, Todd. Good to see you, buddy. And so what I've got here, believe it or not, is I'm tethered to my phone. And uh, and then I've got my laptop set up here. And then I've got the tripod and I've got the Logitech cam uh, basically behind me. And uh, and I got my little mobile broadcast studio going on, which is pretty, pretty sweet. I believe I've got about less than two hours on the laptop. I tested it before to see how long it would last just the battery. Um, but anyway, so I thought I'd just like hang out out here, and uh, I've got the I've got my little uh, lav mics with me, and um, and I'm looking out at that, um, and I am in the gazebo with the broken roof. What was your first clue? <laughs> uh, now there's a part of me that thinks what I can also do is make this phone a mobile. Whoops. Let me just use up even more battery with the flashlight. Make this a little mobile thing and I can cruise around. If not, what I can do is I've got about a meter on the cable of the Logitech thing. Uh, and down the hill worked a little bit better because effectively, like right here, right through those trees, that is right over there, basically, uh, kind of right past that, there are cell towers. And uh, as you know, cell towers are our friend. But yeah, this is the gazebo, and basically those rocks sort of right basically about, see if I can move my hand correctly, uh, right there are where Gracie and I uh, commonly will sit for, for sunset. And uh, hey, Carl, good to see you, buddy. And so um, just so you know that you're not missing out on a whole lot, basically if I move my picture, then you see what I'm covering. So there's a little bit of rocks. There's a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of motorbike, which kind of looks cool. But I'll tell you what, I'll just like cover. Um, uh, in the yacht park, level, yeah, that would be pretty sweet, right? <laughs> nice seventy-eight foot Hatteras. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't have lofty goals or anything like that. Um, but, uh, oh, that's a very large B. That's interesting. And I'm actually, I'm not, oops, sorry, guys. I'm like tethered to the thing. But I've got about like three or four meters on this. And in fact, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to, uh, I just remembered, I just remembered that I forgot um, uh, that uh, I have my my sodas and that sort of thing, my, my water and my soda over there in the motorbike. So I'm going to go grab that here in a second. But. Uh, Captain says, great to see you, Mike. The best looking dude at the cool kids table has arrived. Well, welcome, Captain. Glad you're here, buddy. I'm glad that your, uh, your self-proclaimed gorgeousness is being shared with us. I really appreciate it. Carl says, uh, ever met up with fellow YouTubers? There's something happening. Johnny, uh, Foreigner Joe, or Do More Life. So yeah, Carl. So uh, at the recommendation of several of you guys, actually, when I was down in Prachrop Curry Con, I did meet up with uh, Foreigner Joe. One of the videos on his channel is of uh, he and I hanging out at the, um, it's a cafe. I can't remember what it's called. It's like the, anyway, it's a cafe right there on Prochop Curry Con Beach. Uh, and uh, what, do you? There's no need to kid, dude. I mean, trust me. In my eyes, I'm ridiculously handsome because my girlfriend tells me so. <laughs> and uh and yeah todd i know right i mean i guess suppose you could you could say that i am rubbing it in but um here it, it, i mean you guys know me well enough right so you know that one of the biggest excitements i have right now other than of course the gorgeousness of that is the fact that i got my lap here let me see if i can show you so i have this is on this this camera's on a tripod so just imagine it's on a tripod um 
but basically I have it set up like that. So I have my laptop here and it's sitting out over there and I'm looking out over there. Um, and then the, uh, that right there is basically the internet connection. I'm tethering to my phone. And then way up through the clouds there or up to the trees there is the, uh, is the cell tower. And so this is what uh, we refer to at the cool kids table as geek out dot crazy. <laughs> Mike's geek out. <laughs> settle down. Settle down. Dude, you have no idea how excited I am about this. Because here's the thing. You guys know I was in radio. Well, I've, I've also been in TV. And uh, to be able to throw stuff in a backpack that literally all in everything that I have here with me, easily less than $1,000. The backpack cost me like six bucks. The laptop I got for Gracie, it's, um, it's an Asus and it's got like limited RAM and that sort of thing. But I spent not a two full days, but I did it on one day and then I came back with it, tweaking it to make sure that like, I mean, it's essentially only got four gigs of RAM. It's amazing that it's even working. But I'm like, okay, how can I get a mobile broadcast studio basically in my, in my, in my backpack, right? And I've done it. So, I mean, you know, these, these little triumphs, <laughs> uh, they're very helpful to the engineer. I can tell you that, right? You are hot, Mike, no doubt. Absolutely, Captain. Just ask me. Just, I'll tell you what, just send, just send Grace me a me Gracie a message. She'll be like, yeah, no, trust me. He is. Just ask him. <laughs> yeah, Carl, I'll tell you what. Foreigner Joe is a really good dude. He's a very, very cool guy. Um, and it was an honor to meet up with him. Um, he's really normal, and he really cares about gifts, and he really cares about the community. And, you know, he cares about himself, too. I mean, he takes good care of himself, obviously. He's physically fit, and uh, and you know he's got a great life. I mean, he worked his butt off, um, and uh, and so now he's just simply reaping the rewards of that. And uh, I completely honor that. And he's got a great sort of message that he gives um, to people. And again, he does on YouTube what I can't do on YouTube, and vice versa. So it's pretty neat. Gracie is a keeper. Absolutely, you have no idea. <laughs> Mike has a business already, Captain Turner. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I am I'm very open minded. Did I show you this to you guys yesterday? I think I did. Uh, the the bracelet deals, and then usually, usually if you're sort of like in the middle of nowhere uh, kind of thing, and there's a temple, and it's not near a very big city, then usually what will happen is you'll go in, and they will give you kind of like a little thing here when you meet with you know, the, a monk or the Buddha, um, and then sometimes they'll give you these uh, you know these these made bracelets, which are which are really cool. And I didn't realize this until this morning. I didn't even notice this until this morning. So right here, you can see. Stand by. Um, let's make it bigger just briefly. So right here, um, you can see that little kind of round thing, right? Well, what is in there is one of the one centimeter square thin pieces of gold that you get when you go to. Whoops, sorry. When you go to the uh, when, when you go to the Buddha, effectively, and um, and and then what will happen is you'll take it out of a sort of folded piece of paper. Oh, for the love of God! You'll fold. It'll be a folded piece of paper, and then what you do is that you basically press it onto the um, onto the statue of the Buddha. And uh, and I always thought, well, that's kind of neat. You know, one of these days I'm gonna have to take one of those with me to, you know, like keep it as a souvenir. Or, Hello from Atlanta, good to see you, Rockman. Love the colors on that bracelet. Aren't they cool, dude? I mean, it's like full on glow in the dark. You know, it's like really great. Um, how much did I miss? Not a whole lot, Patrick. We're just kind of hanging out. I'm just uh, letting you guys know of my uh, of my hung ceiling skills. You can see I got uh, got plenty of tile up there. Got my T rail going on. And uh, yeah, I'm basically uh, the contractor of contractors. So, got to run, but wanted to drop in and say hello and see what you're up to now, Carl. Well, thank you very much, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, you didn't miss roll call. Absolutely. You are here for it, I chuckle. Good to see you, my friend. Um, and so, right now, uh, if you did show up late, let me just make sure that I get the pronunciation of it right. I want to let you know where I am. First of all, I'm on the island of Koh Chang, meaning I'm on the island of Koh Chang Island, because Ko is the island, right? Anyway, I'm on Pichang Island, and uh, I'm on uh, Tumpang Beach, uh, just kind of down the street from Tumpang Beach. And um, 
I think it took me uh, it took me longer to stop at the little mom and pop shop and get a uh, Coke Zero and two waters uh, than it did to basically drive over here on the motorbike. So, um, uh, Patrick, Mike, you are getting fancy. Are you a tech guy? I am a ridiculous tech guy. And uh, not only do I believe I actually have some skills in that area, but I absolutely have a gigantic passion for it. And so, um, one of the things, Patrick, that you may not know is that I used to be in radio years ago, and I was also in TV, and I was in, on the air for sure, but I was also an engineer. Um, and so the ability for me to take a $5 backpack and basically fill it with well less than $1,000 worth of equipment and come out to here um, with, you know, with my $40 Logitech camera and my, what did I pay for it, $20, $20 uh, tripod. Actually, I think the most amount of money I paid was for these for these microphones if you guys are into lav mics boy it makes some pretty good ones this one's nice because it's got a uh, tip ring ring sleeve connector so you can actually plug it into a phone too uh and use it there so that's kind of cool uh but it, it yeah it's a, it's a totally nice view and the beauty is is that like there are i haven't yesterday i found three new views like this this is one of the very favorite views of gracie and i and I refer to this as our spot. You know, if you guys have those, like with your with your significant other, right? You have like your spot. And uh, looks nice. Hey, Jim, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming by on Facebook. Bob, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming by. Hey to you as well. And um, and yeah, Rackman, I got to tell you. And you know, here's the other thing too. I want to let you guys know something. I'm actually going to do probably a video on it. And it's going to be titled Notifications. And the N-O is going to be in capital letters. And notifications is going to be the small characters. Because um, I was going through the comments, you know, that I get. Like, I wake up, right, and it tells me people that have commented. And so Rackman is actually one of the people that reminded me of that. Uh, because I saw a couple of his comments. And for the most part, I try and respond to the best of my ability. Um, but here's the thing that bothers me. And again, back to the notification thing, right? So what happens when someone comments, usually, is I get a notification. Hey, this person commented. And it either shows up in the app or on uh, via email, which is fine. So I'm in the comments and that sort of thing. And I guess. I mean, I don't know whether this is the case because it's not like I have a million, right? but I do have over 1,500 subscribers, and thank you guys very much for that. Um, I'm honored big time. And um, so anyway, what I did was I go through there, and there are like comments that happened like two weeks ago, like from, from Rockman, I think. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even respond to this guy. So anyway, so that, you know, as you know, that bothers me again. Um, I'm also looking out at this. <laughs> so trust me, it's not like I'm intentionally bothered by that sort of thing. It's just one of those technical things that just kind of bums me out. Aztec says, it is going fantastic. Nothing but gratitude. Hashtag gratitude attack right now, dude. I got to tell you. You know what? I wish I could zoom in with this Logitech. I probably can. It's probably got like a, a Logitech software. But let me see if I can at least point it to... Okay, yeah. So you see those... And then I'll just leave it. Sit steady. You see those guys down there? The um, Oh, actually, wait. Hold on. What if I were to do this and then make it bigger? Boom, how you doing? So those uh, folks have been down there um, fishing. And this is a very common spot for, for guys to do that. Oh, and I'm really glad there's someone moving so you can be like, okay, Mike, that's just a really bitchy chill, isn't it? You don't actually have a camera there. You're not actually streaming live from the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that turns out I am. But um, anyway, so that's a very common place for guys to come and, uh, and hang out and, uh, and fish. And I, the thing that, that bums me out, actually, now that I think about it, Gracie and I, I don't think we've ever spent so much time here such that um, when we have been here, um, we've seen someone leave with some fish. <laughs> so I actually don't really know how uh, successful they are at fishing here, but, um, but it's something that I, I really like to watch. Gracie, Gracie really wants me to take her fishing, um, and uh, it's because she likes fishing, but hasn't really. And um, so anyway. That guy's gonna take off right now. Put this over here and and give you a view of where of where we would park our boat <laughs> through the pylons over there. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty good. Yeah, super view. I think so, Captain. Thanks so much, man. I'll bring my poles when I visit. You, you do it, man. Definitely. Uh, you know what's interesting about that is I didn't see a whole lot of places where I could buy poles. Um, you know, sometimes you can like get them and rent them, but they're usually not like really great quality. But um, but over here, I didn't see a I didn't see a whole lot of places where you where you could do that. And um, 
And uh, so, so yeah, definitely bring your own. Bring your own snorkel gear. Apparently, they rent a uh, mask and uh, and snorkel, but for some reason, at least the stuff that I've been reading, they don't rent flippers. Um, flippers, flippers, faster than lightning, flippers. And um, so anyway. <laughs> I have travel fishing rods and I take everywhere. Good for you, dude. So you have like the big tube that you like put up above in the, in the carry-on. That's, that's great. And uh, yeah, guys have not said anything negative. So here's what I'm going to do in the future. I'm just going to assume that like my audio is good and the video is decent unless you guys say otherwise. How's that? Because as you know, <laughs> I, get, I tend to obsess about uh, things that uh, are technically imperfect. And so uh, with any luck, uh, you guys will just keep me accountable there. And uh, and I like those motorbikes, but I also kind of like the water. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to do that. Um, you know, it was interesting. I was I had a call last night uh, at about eight my time, so it was about nine o'clock back in um, on the East Coast, uh, and it was with a tel it was with a company out of Tel Aviv. They're a startup, uh, and they are coming out with a uh, a broadcast platform. But they also want to have a um, kind of like a social network behind it. And so we're going through the thing and I'm like, OK, well, like, what is your vision? What's your culture like over there? I mean, yeah, you guys want me and a few other people to be beta testers. Um, and uh, and that's good because, you know, um, I'm very judgmental <laughs> uh, when it comes to software that people expect me to trade my money for. But anyway, so we're having this call. And I said to the woman, okay, so is it your expectation that people will leave YouTube and come to your platform to watch my videos, as well as all the other people that were on the Zoom call, other three other uh, three other YouTube influencers? And um, and she said, yeah, absolutely. And I said, okay, you're delusional. <laughs> I said, look, I broadcast on like seven different platforms, and I get maybe, maybe four concurrent on uh on uh, Facebook, and that's the highest. I will get one, maybe two on Twitch. I will get um, one on DLive, which is live streaming on the blockchain, if you don't know. 16 watching, thank you very much, Tommy. And so to your point, right, so I get like 16. And, uh, and I've been up to as high as 50. And when the video is over, then I look back, like this morning I got up and it's just, you know, it's just one of the notifications that I get. It was like 253 people would watch, which is really cool. Actually, the coolest part, is that I got an email from my mom, <laughs> and she said she watched it, and so she asked me questions like about that cave that I went into, and I didn't know exactly how it would turn out, and so I was watching on the replay. So I just went, and it was kind of cool. The video really didn't sort of chop up; it just kind of went like from one scene and then skipped like sixty seconds of our lives. But um, the uh, the cool part was I was able to get all of the cave, and so I was very happy about that. So my mom had some questions about the cave. That was um, but the other thing is that, uh, you know, for the most part, like, I mean, if you guys don't know, I mean, Google obviously for years had been the number one search engine. And right now it teeters between Google and YouTube. So people don't just Google stuff, they YouTube. And I said, okay, so you've got basically one company that owns the number one and the number two search engine, as well as one could argue the number one homepage on most people's, you know, browser. Um, and then I said, and you're going to like, Try and pull people away from that, and I'm, you're going to expect me to convince my guys who, you know, I told them all, I said, look, it, here is my culture. It is called the Cool Kids Table. It is the Cool Kids Table because the cool kids are there. If I just show up, it doesn't mean it's the Cool Kids Table. It means it's Mike's Table. And I said, so we have this culture of that, and they started talking about trolls. I said, well, we don't have it. We absolutely don't have it. We don't permit it. We don't allow it. We don't in, enforce. We don't really need to enforce it. It is just something that we talk about. It is a culture that we have here on livemyassoff.com. And so each of the YouTube influencers that were on the call, they were like, dude, I'm going to subscribe right now. And to be fair, I went and looked at their channels, and I'm not subscribing anytime soon. I mean, it's just not something that interests me. They're lovely people. They're actually very, very nice people, and they have great diction, and they have great, great, great presentation. It's just that the topic, I'm not really interested in. Um, and there is a topic that many people are interested in. Um, and one of the, he, he rates cars. So basically once a week, he just like walks out his front door and there's a brand new car there and then he rates it and then he puts it up on YouTube and then he does like a live stream and people chat about it or whatever. And, you know, again, I'm not saying that this is bad, but you know, the world has been doing that for years. <laughs> Long before there was YouTube, there was AM radio. 
people were like, you know, uh, testing out cars. Uh, and, you know, there's a little known magazine called Car and Driver that you may have heard of as well. So anyway, the point is, is that they're talking about trolls and that sort of thing. And I said, it's not, it's not permitted. We, we don't allow it. It doesn't happen. And when people come by, I would submit that because of the culture that we have that we're building here, they don't stick around. They're just like, okay, well, no one's going to give me any attention. So I'm not going to, you know, I don't know whether they're conscious or not. But anyway, so once again, I blame you guys for what happened. Um, uh, Jim says, they fit in uh, the bottle holders on my backpack. Oh, the little mesh things on the side. That is outstanding. They, like, really fold up. Oh, dude, that is killer. That's great, Jim, that you can travel with that. Um, Captain says, uh, I can be bought, Mike. Bring me with you. <laughs> That's actually jokingly what I said. I said, look, you know, I've been in radio before. When you switch formats, whether it's, like, the world's best format in the entire world, it's, it's still change. And sadly, I don't understand why. I love change. But many people don't like change. And, uh, you know, I always say to that, I said, well, no, no, people don't like bad change. <laughs> people love good change. But not everybody. Even, there are even some people that are just like, yeah, but it, it, it could be better or it is better. But I just, I just don't like it as change. Can you see the size, the actual density of that bug that is basically trying to make my body a home for it? Um, the... Uh, and, uh, and I said, so, you know, look, I've been in radio, and so you buy your list. Like, I mean, the fifth caller all day, every day, at the top of every hour, gets $1,000. <laughs> and, uh, and that's, you know, that's, you know, you, they, be, they get bought, right, Captain? But anyway, oh, I'll tell you what, you, you know what, you guys, have a look at that. Or I'll tell you what, why don't I, why don't I just change the view for a second? Because I'm going to walk over to the, I'm going to walk over to the, um, uh, I'm going to walk over to the motorbike, and I'm simply going to get a, uh, so I'll put it there for like about 10 seconds. I'm just going to walk over to the motorbike, and I'm going to get my water and my dash. So stand by. Thank you for that brief pause. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a uh, I'm gonna have a squiggle, and uh, hopefully it will be cool and refreshing, just like I want it to be. I don't like change. I'd rather collect the bills. Yeah, get it. But a bump. Plus they're too heavy, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> How's that? Let me just yell into the microphone that is oh two meters away. Even though I've got that outdoor voice indoors, that still is odd, right? Hey, Teresa, good to see you. Hugs and kisses to you as well. Um, welcome to uh, welcome to the Cool Kids Table. Actually, Teresa knows all about the Cool Kids Table because she was actually part of a very cool table uh, that we're all that all of us were a part of for a while. You may still be a part of it, for all I know. I just don't do it anymore. Physically in San Diego, so it's very difficult for me to lead the board of a nonprofit without phys physically being there. You know, it's kind of interesting. I actually kind of like the look of that bike there. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, you know, you know, it was funny. I was driving my motorbike the other day. Uh, maybe it was yesterday, and it was like just sitting out, sort of over the, um, uh, like like this, basically, like just like out over the water. And I looked at it, and I'm like. Man, if I was as cool as CB Media, I would like totally take a panning shot of that thing and make it look like a race car. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, it's a Honda Click. That's about as good as I could do. So, thank you. We are cool kids. I completely agree to Patrick living the dream. Rockman, good buddy. Very, very, very good buddy. Paramedic in Paradise, shout out from West Coast of Canada. Hello. So, my cousin lives in uh, Victoria Island. Is that right? Is it Victoria or Victoria Island? I believe it's Victoria Island, and um, and yeah, so all my relatives are uh, are Canadian, and so my cousin Don is up in Victoria Island. David Somerville says I wasn't sure if you were actually live, so I threw that oldie in to see if you'd respond. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm an honorary board member. Live in Otai East Lake now. Oh, very cool. That's nice down there. Yeah, I had uh, two guys that worked for me, and they lived down there. And the beauty of it was, it was like. I'm, I was going to say cookie cutter, but that's actually not really the appropriate label. But in other words, they lived in a community. There were new houses everywhere. 
but they didn't just build like houses. Like, I mean, there are houses, there are schools, there are strip malls, there are playgrounds, there are um, half pipe. I don't know what you would call like skate parks, I guess, basically. Plenty of places for people to live a really, really good life. And so that's neat because I got to tell you, uh, I, I, I mean, obviously, you know, I figured it out. But years ago, I just couldn't figure out why I was really happy. Yet, like around me, I'm like, well, it looks like it, it's perfect. It should feel perfect. But it was the environment. Um, and uh, part of that was uh, ambient temperature for me as well as light. Um, but also, um, like, the distractions. So, so, so as an example, like, so I just, like, walked over to the motorbike. Right? I walk over to the motorbike. I lift up the seat. And I pull out a plastic bag. And it's got two waters. And it's got a Coke in it. And then I just, I just put the seat down. And as I was doing so, I thought to myself, God, you know, there was a time in my life where, like, I wouldn't have been caught dead, if you will, with, like, a, you know, used, basically, motorbike that I'm paying, like, eight, nine dollars a day to rent. And I'm like, God, that's so weird. I mean, I just flashed on that. I'm like, I mean, it was, it was important to me to actually probably live arguably beyond my means, in, in a sense, um, and drive a car that was, you know, well north of fifty thousand dollars and um it was all wheel drive because of course in southern california the weather is so treacherous I had like 400 horsepower and i'm like okay what <laughs> you know and so it's really weird how and i don't know whether that was just ego or lack of self-esteem or whatever it was at the time but i don't think like that any longer i think to myself where can i go to like an absolute piece of garbage gazebo that makes me so happy I mean, guys, would you look at that? <laughs> this ceiling is outstanding, and uh, and I couldn't be happier. I mean, there's rusted rebar busting through here, rusted rebar like busting through the pillars, you know. And if you can't see it in my camera, then then there's the ceiling, you know. Got uh, plenty of ventilation going on, <laughs> and uh, but you know what I like about this? Is that, like, yeah, it's kind of damaged. You can be like, ah, oh, must have been a whole bunch of kids. Well, there's very little, little trash around here. There's also hardly any, well, there actually is zero, you know, like bottles, beer bottles, that sort of thing. But there, okay, so that's the only, I was going to say there's no graffiti, but that is uh, right there. That's a little bit of, little bit of graffiti. Um, but it's very limited. And I, and I hope you, if you were able to see my video from yesterday, either live or afterward, you saw me walk into that cave and there was zero graffiti in there, dude. And uh, and again, I'm not saying that like there aren't places in the United States that are incredibly pristine like that, and they're just basically maintained by the community. There's no like law enforcement, but it just seems like where I go at least say that in Thailand, there is more care for the surrounding environment for their neighborhood. So Rackman says to Aztec, uh, BTDT, life is better on the other side. Yeah, I uh, I'm a fan of life. Uh, it's uh, actually pretty awesome. Uh, it definitely uh, definitely beats the alternative, I think. Oh, I didn't put this up here. What am I thinking? I mean, dude, I'm like, like loser branding. Can you believe that? I didn't like throw the big eye up there. <laughs> um, uh, Patrick says to Aztec, same here. The next seven years will be rough for me, but it should be worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Aloha, ERMD. Good to see you. Thanks for coming by. And uh, Todd says, my second part has been submitted to on my way to be living the dream. Good for you. That is outstanding. Really, really great. Congratulations. That, that, that probably feels really awesome, right? Mm. You know what I should have done is I should have bought like some, should have bought like a bag of ice or something like that because there are certain beverages. Water doesn't necessarily need to be one of them. But there are certain things that I drink, and if it's not like 32 and a half degrees, like 33 degrees, like basically ice cold, if you will, it's okay. But the minute it gets past like about, and I'm talking crazy, and the minute it gets past about like 35 degrees, it's like, ugh, it's like I'm drinking. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's the level I've reached uh, with my, sorry, with my squiggle. Or my, my squiggle zero, to be clear. But the interesting thing about water, of course, and of course, as we know, it's the high heat of vaporization, it stays cooler longer. And refreshing. Mm. Aztec says, 
You're drinking Coke. Do you own shares? Do you get high on your own supply, Mike? <laughs> Should be in time for when Thailand opens up, too. Yeah, that's really cool. Good for you, Todd. That's really great. And uh, yes, I, I definitely got high on <laughs> um, I was not uh, I was not financially successful in that, in that portion of my life. Mm. The other nice thing I like about this gazebo is it's far enough away and sort of like on the other side of like kind of the edge of the rocks, where like I can kind of hear a few things that they're saying to each other, um, but I'm pretty confident that they're not uh, bothered by this, um, because I think there's something to be said for being in a quiet environment when you're fishing. And I'm not saying because they're more successful at catching fish because they're quiet, and that may be the case, but I just also think that it's like a it's a pastime that involves uh, that involves some quiet. Hey, I'm just curious. Was there like a lot of wind noise just then? Because again, I've got these, I've got the, the lav mics, but I've also got the windscreens on. So I was just, I'm just kind of curious whether that breeze that came up um, was distracting from a fair, uh, fair perspective. Rockman says to Patrick, as the days go by and suddenly it's seven years down the road and all the adventures along the way. Absolutely, David Somerville. Good to see. Uh, have you learned to read the squiggles? It is Sanskrit. No, I haven't. I don't. Uh, uh, I'm illiterate, literally. And um, I don't know how to read any Thai. Um, every now and then I will be somewhere regularly. Uh, like this happened in Cha'am. Um, I don't know if it ever happened here when Gracie and I were here. But I will see like a similar sign and I will know what that means. And then when I see those characters together again, I'll be like, oh, that says like open or that says stop or that says. Um, you know, red or you know, money or something like that, or Hong Nam. That's the, those are the characters for uh, the bathroom, you know, for restrooms. I think. So anyway, uh, no wind sounds. Quiet as a mic. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate that. And then, oh wow, look at that, dude! I got like three hearts on a yellow smiley face from Big T over at uh, over at the over at the book. <laughs> Excuse me. I do hope you make it over here. I mean, I know that you, you said you will come, Teresa. That that would be really neat. I know that you'd love it, just from a from a weather perspective. Uh, Teresa, remind me or remind us. Um, are I know that you're Hawaiian by descent, I believe. But did you like grow up and live there for a significant amount of time? Like, or were you like, oh yeah, no, I grew up in Hawaii, but then like lived there and did high school in, uh, uh, you know, high school in San Diego, or you know, did. Some I'm in Iowa or something like that. I, I really don't know a lot about your, your background, actually. Um, which is sort of interesting if you think about it, right? Because a lot of times, you know, you'll meet someone. Like, this is, okay, so there's many, many men. Okay? Guys, do you do this? I, I, had, I, I caught myself getting in the habit of doing this because I was like, wait a minute, that's not really the thing. You go to a party, you meet some other guys, and you're talking or whatever. And within maybe the first four questions or so, like, oh, how do you, how, like, how do you know the groom or, you know, whatever it is. Right? Why are you here kind of thing? Um, the question become the question comes, what do you do for a living? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and I, I guess, I don't know whether that's bad necessarily. Um, but what I discovered is that it wasn't the more important question. Um, you know, and, and the problem though, is that it's so common that when I would ask, you know, meet some new guy and we'd be talking about, you know, whatever. And, you know, if it weren't, if it wasn't a complete 150% work scenario. Such that it's like, okay, well, so like, why, like, why are you at this IT meeting for VMware? Like, what, you know, what exactly do you do? That's a fair question. But I'm just talking about like, like, like more social engagements. Um, you know, we'd be talking about something or whatever, and I'd be like, dude, like, what makes you happy? Because you know, a lot of times people are like, oh my god, that's like that shirt is ugly or awesome or crazy or whatever. Uh, Captain says I went to high school in Texas. Mike. Oh, very cool. Nice. You know, there are parts of Texas, man, that I really like. And the thing that I like about Texas in general, and this is probably, you know, a stereotype or whatever, but I don't think it's a bad one. Um, people from Texas are very pro-Texas. Um, and they seem to have a pride there. And I have a feeling it's probably because, like like you said, like they, they go to school there and they stay there more so. Whereas in California, it's so um, transient. Right. That, that I mean, again, you know, there are people that grew up there and, you know, I'm, I knew several. Um, 
But, you know, like when I was when I first moved there and I would be out like socializing in bars and stuff, I tell you, I met I definitely met more than 50 percent of the people that I met were not from San Diego. They weren't from California. Bob says went to high school in Saudi. <laughs> Absolutely. dude. That's like totally cool. Um, I in dot. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be. That's Dorchester. That's not South. Hmm. Oh, the other thing that I noticed that, again, you know, kind of middle of nowhere, right? But what they do is that over here by this, by that tree, they have trash containers for recycling and that sort of thing. And that's kind of cool. I really like that about Thailand. There's, uh, there's a lot of um, trash barrels, basically. Uh, and I think that that's, you know, that's sort of helpful. What I've noticed in the Philippines is that there's not. <laughs> um, there's not trash barrels. And Rike and I were having this discussion. I think he even brought up on one of his videos. He goes, you know, of all the people that are like out of work and of all the trash that's all around the Philippines, in his mind, and I completely agree with this, we were chatting about this, I think probably on the first meeting I had with him, which was at the Why Not in uh, Dina Ghetto. One afternoon I was over there and we uh, met up and hung out. And the rest is history. Uh, and, uh, and we're like, look, they should just put trash barrels everywhere. Like all they have to do right now, because there's no solution to it is just go where all the mounds of trash are and be like, Oh, this is where we'll put the barrels. <laughs> and then you employ people to drive around in trucks and take the trash away. So people are employed and the damn trash is not, there. you know, but again, I get it. You know, potentially there's no budget for that. Minute. But here in Thailand, uh, it's funny because like if you're if you're unaware, like sometimes you'll be walking down the street like late afternoon, early evening, and be like, oh my god, these people put garbage everywhere. It's like, yeah, dude, we'll give it an hour, and then there's gonna be like a truck with like five guys on it, and they're gonna come by, and they're gonna pick up all this trash, and then in the morning, everyone's gonna come out really early, and they're all gonna sweep the sidewalk in front of their shop. They're all gonna sweep. They're gonna sweep the street. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's it's very clean here, but. Um, the RMD says, I think San Diego is transient and people want to move. Yeah, absolutely. Many people want to move there. And there is this, uh, there's this excellent, you know, word of mouth almost marketing ploy that has been occurring in the United States for years, which uh, is belief in the statement, San Diego has perfect weather. And uh, that is not Mike's opinion. <laughs> uh, it's got pretty damn nice weather. Uh, but again, it's not hot and humid enough. For me, so. Asia Unscripted. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, Jason. Yeah. Uh, I'm just here for the free pancakes. Oh, you know what's funny? I was actually gonna get some. Uh, I was gonna get some pineapple pancakes, um, but I wasn't really hungry, you know. And um, what I've discovered uh, since being over 40, basically, is that when I'm not hungry, <laughs> I probably shouldn't eat uh, because it will. If you've seen pictures of me on Facebook or something, I posted this one a while ago. What happens to me is that yes, I it, it gets you know it stays in my tummy, right? So I get like a little bit of a gut. Um, but I get it in my face. It shows up in my cheeks, right? So it's just like, I mean, I can be actually pretty slim, but it's like, yeah, but dude, your face is... And of course, I'm looking at myself up, so my, it's going to make my face look fatter. If I were to look, you know, down, then of course it would look better. But, uh, yeah. So I decided, well, I would really like some pineapple pancakes, <laughs> but I don't need them. And, uh, and so anyway, so I don't know, I'll probably have something later on. I don't know, you know... It's it, it's really interesting how you know when I get old, now that I have gotten older, um, it definitely my priorities change, and I'm not the only guy in the world. There's many people, probably a lot of you guys. Todd says, uh, and then you won't get a thousand baht ticket for a chiclet in Bangkok. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Aztec, unfortunately, you're scrolled down through, and so I'm not. Uh, hold on, Let's see if I can uh, get to the comments here on YouTube that I may have missed. I apologize. Rackman says environmental awareness helps education toward mobility helps too. Yeah, absolutely. Any of you guys that are basically my vintage are probably remember if I tell you the uh, the commercial of the Indian on the side of the freeway looking at all the trash that people are throwing out. And for whatever reason, it seemed like that advertisement uh, curtailed people throwing garbage out on the side of the road. I don't know. I mean, it was just one of the many things. That and fining people. I think it's a thousand dollars to litter on the freeway in California. I can't remember exactly. Um, let me go to this thing and then turn down the music. 
Oh my gosh, listen to that fidelity. Are you kidding me? Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, let's see, live chat. Um, what would be nice is that if I could just like pop up the chat on this device, that's okay, it'll be good. I just want to, I mean, I know it's, it's not going like, oh, we got 15 people here. That's like totally awesome. You know what's interesting is I get easily over 30 when I do schedule these things. So, um, I do apologize for that because I know that uh, early on when I started doing live streams, if I didn't schedule them, uh, the buddy of mine, Marty, he'd be like, hey, dude, you know, you can schedule these things. I'm like, really? How? <laughs> but he basically taught me how to do that. And so I was in the habit of doing that. Um, fortunately, um, I haven't been lately. And then like this morning I got up, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do a live stream. And then about five minutes went by and I said, a live stream. 16 watching, 16 thumbs. Perfection. Absolutely, dude. I will go for that all day long. That's great. Um, Oh, Cap. Yeah, I'm glad I looked back at this because this is a, this is a cool comment. Captain says, I agree, Mike. Most Texans want to stay in Texas. How did I get to Chicago? <laughs> Let me guess. You moved there for work? I'm not saying you did necessarily, but in my experience, for, for, meaning for me, um, the whole like, I can't believe I ended up in this city thing is uh, relative to, yes, of course, I took the job. Um, but yeah, I could deal with some free pancakes, too. That would be pretty cool. Although, you know, there's not to be, I, I'm really, I'm okay with paying for pancakes, too. Because then there's, a lot, there's a little bit more accountability. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Yeah, and Aztec says, it's amazing in Thailand how every single vendor slash store sweep every day. Like, it's the done thing. It absolutely is. And what's funny is that where my bungalow is, obviously, it's on a lot of land, right? It's a property that they own the property. And uh, and then there's like a fence or something, and then there's you know the other person's property. And without fail, like if I'm on my phone or I'm having coffee, like in the mornings that I've been here, I pretty much know when it's about seven fifteen to seven thirty because I hear the sweeping behind us, you know. And they're not yelling, they're not making noise, they're not doing like me, um, but they're just sweeping. And I'm like, yeah, that's like it's it's like what they do, man. It's like, it's, it's like this total pastime. It's really it's really fantastic. Screenshot and send to Rob. Oh, yeah, that would be cool, man. You could, like, totally do that. That'd be great. Go for it. Rackman says, um, if a person gets got littering, never saw one in 35 years. In yeah, no, I've never seen. Well, to be fair, I did, in fact, litter. Um, I got busted when I was a heavy smoker, throwing a cigarette butt out of my window. Trust me, I know that's not the thing to do, and it was really stupid. Uh, and I got fined for it, and I paid the fine. And I don't remember how much it was. I remember it was a, what I would refer to probably as a lot of money. So I think it was like $500. But unlike any of my speeding tickets, which, of course, you have the right to pay, and I always did that, even if I kind of pretty much knew I was speeding, meaning I was going over 66 miles an hour, but you know, regardless, spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. But yeah, when I got busted doing that, I'm like, no, absolutely, you know, stood up guilty. It's like, well, and it was funny because when I said guilty, like right away, um, the judge was like, okay, well, I mean, you know that you shouldn't be doing that, right? I mean, it, it was nice. They, they didn't demean me or belittle me or anything, but they were, you know, like, hey, dude, you know, don't throw friggin' burning embers out of the window. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'll definitely pay the fine. I'm really sorry. Won't do it again. And so, you know, in that sense, right, the punishment slash fitting the crime thing. So, uh, and did, oh, I'm, and I'm also glad I got this because Captain answered my question and he said, uh, ex-wife brought me it. Brought me up, sir. Damn her to hell. Uh, and it, it just, it phrased that, I guess, because you said the word hell, so I'm absolutely showing it now. Um, so, Patrick, I hate it when foreigners litter in Thailand. I hate it when anyone litters in Thailand, but I know what you mean. It's almost more disrespectful. And, you know, here's an interesting thing. Uh, chiclet in Thailand is a cigarette butt. Oh, I had no idea. I did not know that. Um, the only sort of reference to chiclet is chicle, chicle that I know from Mexico. Because when you're standing there, not standing there, when you're sitting there in your car waiting to cross the border, that's what they do. Chicle, chicle. And then, of course, they want to do the other stuff too. But um, David says, I hope Thailand has a lot of electric vehicles. It would be the perfect place to have them, make them, sell them, since the Thais seem to be very resourceful and environmentally friendly. Yeah, they are, but you also got to remember that it is sort of a new technology. And so, earlier, early adopters in the United States, those people exist because they're overall, you know, wealthier, or there's more wealthier people, right? So, I mean, when the Tesla first came out, and it was like $110,000 or whatever, it was like, okay, well, you know, it's not like the 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 Model T, <laughs> um, but, you know, and then, but then, of course, it turned into like a, a status symbol, 
And it wasn't until like four or five models later that they were like, oh yeah, we got to release one that's going to cost thirty-six thousand dollars, right? So there are there is an electric motorbike company actually that I follow. Um, they have one of their demo units in uh, True Digital Park down on Lower Sukhumvit near where I live. And the reason I really think that they are on to something is because they have the bike, right? And then it's 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 very mod. It's like kind of square, right? It's like buying. It's kind of like buying the Volvo of of, uh, of, of motorbikes. But like sort of in this, like underneath the seat, uh, is it's pro it's about the size of a smaller car battery, and it simply has a handle in it. And you pull that out, and you take it to the charging station, and you drop that battery off, and you take the new fully charged battery, and you put that in, which is genius and totally possible for a motorbike. Right? I mean, you can't do that with a car. But the beauty of it being a motorbike is you can take the battery. I mean, you can literally refuel in less time for an electric motorbike than it takes for you to refuel with a gasoline one. And let's face it, the tanks here are like, you know, a liter. And it takes no time. So that's like really impressive. And so I, I, I completely agree with you. I totally hope that they, uh, that they do that. Um, but, uh, and the cost of it right now, because they pretty much only have prototypes, it's like each one's about, uh, I think it was like 200,000 baht, so it's about 65, $6,700. That's not cheap, you know, and you could argue, okay, well, for like 200,000 baht, I can buy, um, <laughs> I mean, you can get a pretty decent brand new motorbike for like 30, you know, pretty much about a thousand bucks, like 33,000 baht, so, you know, you divide that into 200,000, it's like, okay, so like my entire family could get a motorbike of like one electric bike but i totally got what you're saying and i fully support that and i do hope that they allocate some attention units to it um time talent and resources that sort of thing right um mm -mm -mm -mm. oh brian good to see you buddy uh what did i miss here was listening to malin get angry oh was he <laughs> he does he does say i get emotional uh Da Thank you for coming by, though. I really appreciate it. Daniel says, Mike, you look so refreshed. All that stress of vacationing in Bangkok has melted away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure, there's a higher speed, right, um, in Bangkok. And uh, But it's interesting. I mean, I, I, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I, I feel more relaxed. I feel like I'm ridiculously on vacation. Um, and, you know, I don't know, I don't necessarily know whether it's just Bangkok or whether it's the fact, well, I mean, it is Bangkok, but I don't know whether it's just the, the whole, like, you know, bigger city thing. Um, but, uh, but because I like, I need <laughs> uh, the ocean. I need the sound of it. I need the smell of it. I need the breeze from it. I need the temperature to be warm around it. Um, but like where I'm looking at right now, like when I look out at this right here, um, this looks a lot like a place that I hung out in Maui. And so I have very, you know, good memories of that. Um, but it's also one of the things that, you know, the good news is that I don't have to be spending what it costs to live in Maui, in Maui, uh, I'm here in, you know, in this little island just off the coast of Thailand. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, and you know, I mean, you guys know how I get, right? I mean, I'm having a gratitude attack all day long. <laughs> I got to wake up this morning. What are you kidding me? What lottery did I just win? What lottery did my soul just win? Um, so anyway, th thank you, Daniel. I really appreciate you saying that. And um, Todd says he wanted to give Max fine of 2,000 baht. I talked him down to 1,000. Yeah, okay, well, that's, that's good, but I'm, I kind of still got glad. Um, thanks to Todd. Love those little bits of knowledge, says Rock. Aztec says cars cost a fortune in Thailand already. Couldn't imagine the price of a Tesla. Uh, well, it depends on the car, but I know what you mean. Like the import duty. I talked to a guy when I was down in Prachar Prairie Con. Interestingly enough, relative to the question earlier on, but do I collaborate or have I met up with any other YouTubers? Um, when I was with Foreigner Joe, there was this guy sitting down next to us. You may remember Joe, like, sort of panning over to him. We were talking to him for a while. He's a Thai guy. Lived in California for a while up in, uh, uh, I want to say Marin. I think Marin County is what he said. Anyway, he's driving a Mini Cooper. And he's like, oh, I asked my Mini Cooper over there. It's, you know, a year or two old. Uh, and it because of the duty, it costs one hundred thousand dollars for a Mini Cooper. <laughs> okay, so I'm like, oh my god. Now you got to remember that there's also a lot of cars that are manufactured. I mean, you can get that you don't pay that ridiculous amount. I mean, you can get a Mitsubishi. Fords are manufactured here. Uh, 
you know, like all the bot buses, right? I mean, they're obviously made here for here. And um, and so those like diesel Mitsubishi pickup trucks, those, you know, those are, you know, relatively inexpensive, meaning they're not that much more expensive than other ones. Now, Joe, I mean, he bought a top of the line Mitsubishi SUV. And I would submit that it was only probably, he probably only paid about another 10% more here than he would have at home. Um, and uh, so, you know, but it's big. And it's, it's one of the bigger Mitsubishi SUVs. And it's fully loaded and everything. So, I mean, those things are easily 50K in the U.S., right? Like, I mean, off the lot, if you will. Um, but yes, some do. Like, buying a BMW over here, buying a Mercedes, buying it, it, that, those are ridiculously I completely agree, Aztec. Patrick says electric charging station infrastructure isn't there yet in Thailand. No, it's not. And that's why I'm really encouraged by the uh, the battery replacement uh, paradigm that's going to occur or that these people that make this motorbike want to occur. So ERMD says probably be about 10 million baht. Todd says, um, I threw it a pile of about 100 butts. And when the cop tapped me on the shoulder, motioning me to follow him and out of the 100 bots already lying there, he picked the one up that I threw down. Yeah. Well, wrong place, wrong time. It happens. Uh, Aztec says, yeah, on the bike's note, why Tesla aren't pumping them out baffles me. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, probably because the markup isn't there. I mean, I don't know what they're making on the Teslas as far as the markup goes. Um, but, you know, again, it's it's just like supply in sort of demand, right? I think there's probably less demand. And you got to remember, like one of the, I mean, Tesla is the iPhone of automobiles. I mean, it is a status symbol. And, you know, I would submit that at least 30% of the people that buy a Tesla, you know, if they've got that kind of money, even if they don't have that kind of money and they're getting like a smoke and rebate on their taxes or whatever, and they're just paying, you know, like six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month, and they basically couldn't afford the car anyway, but they're able to afford the lease payment on it. Um, you know, a lot of I, I would submit that a lot of them are doing it for status. Like towards the end of my automotive ownership, uh, my cars were automotive appliances. They were they were transportation appliances, um, and I just got it and I pushed the button and it started and it got me from point A to point B. It wasn't a disgusting car and it had okay interior and everything, but it definitely wasn't fifty thousand bucks of a car. I mean, again, I was leasing. It. I was like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna front load money into a very quickly depreciating asset. Um, I am going to, uh, as many of you guys said, you know, if it, if it does one of three things, lease, right? If it flies, floats, or, right? And, um, yeah, I can, uh, I completely agree with that. But yeah, it's, it's bad timing. I completely agree there. Uh, I, I, can, I, I agree there, Todd. Todd says, uh, motioned me to go to his table on the corner. That was my first trip to Thailand. Learned my lesson. Yeah, and that's the point. I mean, it's just like, okay, whatever. It, a thousand baht sucks, but again, it's only a thousand baht and pretty, pretty cool lesson. And it's a great story to tell other people too. say, hey, you know, dude, don't do this. And at the end of the day, if you tell someone that story, however, they're motivated by it. At the end of the day, there's going to be less trash. <laughs> so it's like, OK, so, you know, kind of cool. Hey, Max, greetings from New Jersey and greetings to you as well. I hope you and your audience are doing well. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. See, now you're you. That's an example, guys, right there. That is. That is the cool kids table. That is living my ass off. That is a participant in, in the cool kids table. Just comes by. Hey, how's it going? Hope everyone's doing great. Not just the, the talking head dude. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing okay. Captain says, I'm going to retire in Maui for one month on my way to Thailand. You know, that is a very uh, wonderful way to do it. Um, I've done that both directions. Um, I have uh, my first trip to Thailand, actually, uh, because at the time, my girlfriend, my uh, you know, U.S. girlfriend, uh, American girlfriend. She was very American, right? I mean, she was like blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, implants, Northern California, you know, it was just, she was ridiculously California. And, um, but she lived in Northern California and she didn't want to move to San Diego. And I'm like, well, I'm not moving to San Francisco. You're delusional. No way. So, you know, if you're not committed to this, then, and that actually kind of just coincided with my first trip to Thailand, which, as you might guess, opened my mind a little bit more to, uh, to what was available to uh, be a partner, and uh, and I thought, oh, these these people, these women in that part of the world, they're teammates. They're 
they're not competing for anything that I have. They're like, no, if if I'm going to be part of this relationship, like, I mean, it's not, it's not none of this 50-50 nonsense. I got the feeling after coming here and meeting some Thai girls, and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a little partial to Gracie, right? But she's awesome, okay? But it's not 50-50 with us. It's 100-100. I mean, it is none of this like, oh, yeah, I'll scratch. No, 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 no. I'm not only going to scratch your back. I'll scratch your back and scratch my back at the time. If you can't scratch my back to help out, I mean, it's just like, no, dude, we're, Team, 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 which as you know, stands for together. Everybody appreciates mics. Couldn't resist. Um, so anyway, thank you for coming by. I really appreciate it. Man. That's awesome. Um, when I, I don't know about you, one of my more favorite spots in Maui uh, is just south of Lahaina, um, like before you get down to Kihei. Um, but, uh, it's, there's like these little beaches, right? I mean, it's got a parking lot that'll hold like 25, 30 people. And I just love going in there. And then my second favorite spot is all the way down, basically on the far west road. When you, after, after you pass Wailea and you get into that, you know, ridiculous, like world's most giant strip mall. I'm not a fan. Um, but you know, a lot of people like that and it's nice and it's clean and all that. So anyway. Um, after you get past Wailea and you go basically all the way to the end of the road, then you can just like pull off like in between trees and just look out you know, over the Pacific. And uh, I literally did that for just over eight hours one day. I just sat there in the car and the only time I got out of the car, because I had like a little bit of food there with me, was to basically go into the woods and, you know, use the CR. <laughs> and uh, and that was like literally one of the best days of my life was spending eight hours just like staring out exactly where this camera is right. And uh, and it was it was just fantastic, fantastic. But I needed it big time. It was a, it was a great thing to do. Uh, make sure I'm getting to this. So yeah, that's really cool that you're doing a month in Maui. That's awesome. Are you going to stay in Lahaina? Um, that Max from Dirty Jersey. <laughs> Uh, Daniel says, Captain Fotano will cost about the same. Yeah, it, it, indeed. I will tell you that the three weeks that I was in Thailand, and that was my first time to Thailand, so obviously I'm overspending on a whole bunch of stuff. Three weeks in Thailand, I don't think, I think one week in Maui cost me more. I think that cost me more. It was an entire week, and we like moved from place to place, and we were doing Airbnbs. I mean, one of the Airbnbs was three fifty a night. It was like, oh, man. But it was, you know, up in Haleakala, I don't know, overlooked it. it was awesome. But, um... You are correct, Daniel. Indeed. Hello from Arizona. 111 degrees Fahrenheit today. Awesome. 43 degrees. It's probably 100 and... It feels like 104. Night all. Good to see you, Bob. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Have a good night. Daniel says, Lucid Motors is building a plant in Arizona. Former high-level executive at Tesla is the president of the company. Ah, very interesting. Any ideas where the bars, uh, when the bars are happening in Pate? Uh, well, um, I mean, you're going to probably have to wait till July. They're going to do some, you know, pseudo controlled opening kind of thing down there, um, much like they did with Phuket. But it's one of those deals where even if we were to set a date like today, the possibility of it changing is significant. Um, uh, ERMD, good afternoon, Mike. Aloha. Aloha to you, Mike. Uh, and, oh, got to love Thailand. Thank you for coming by. And thank you guys for welcoming me here. That's totally awesome. Um, Daniel says, Rackman, now that they're becoming established, their production operations have actually increased. Indeed. You know, there's economies of scale. Right? And um, Rackman says to Daniel, still too many people per car. Their automation is way behind and uh, build quality. Company. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. I agree. Um, the view is just horrible. It is. I mean, it, it, that that's why, you know, it's, that's why you're probably changing your channel name to like I will I will accept that. I will uh, I will tough it out Thailand. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty awesome. I dig it here. I don't really know. Um, I, I I do hope that I'm not talking at a volume such that it was bothering those people that are fishing. Although it's 10:15, my experience is that basically people fish early in the morning and then in the evening. Um, so the fact that they're leaving at 10.15, and uh, that kind of tells me that they either caught what they needed to catch for the day, or um, they're just leaving because this is the time of day they leave anyway. Uh, but they didn't really 
I mean, they're Thai, right? So they're not really going to do anything. They're not going to yell at me or anything. But, I mean, they, they were laughing because, of course, I mean, I've got a, you know, I've got a laptop and I'm holding my phone and I got a tripod and I got a microphone and I, you know, I got a bag like full of cables kind of thing. So, I mean, I get it. I mean, people that speak English would laugh at me, you know. Anyway, and they're like, why is he talking? He's talking into his laptop. Oh, my God. He must be, some, you know, and they're probably like, wait a minute. You can't drink alcohol. There's no alcohol available. That guy's totally drunk. How did he get alcohol? <laughs> they're probably going to call the cops and say, dude, this Farang completely hammered. Like, literally standing there with this, like, black cable around his neck, talking into his laptop. <laughs> bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Captain says, uh, Maui is magical. Hard to explain to people that have never been there. It totally is. Yeah, it's like saying um, it's like saying the dating scene's better in Thailand. Someone in well, Southern California, and they're like, "Well, what do you mean by that?" Or say, or saying to someone, "Dude, if you have any issue ever, if you've never been able to like walk up to a girl and just ask her out, or if you've had any sort of trepidation about, you know, trying to meet girls, just go to the Philippines. It's incredibly easy." And then people say. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, you don't you don't know until you get there. But yeah, Maui is magical. Um, it's magical for me because um, I have the personality, maybe you do as well, of trying to find places like this that are like like totally you know nobody else is here. Trying to find that you know going past Wailea and going all the way down south and just like pulling in somewhere because the only cars I see around me are cars that maybe the newest one is 15 years old. So it's a whole bunch of locals and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of vans that, you know, guys are, you know, they don't necessarily live out of, but, you know, they, they live on the island. They have a house, there. but they also kind of like live out of their van. Have you know, that like people have like a van and they just like, they just take it to the beach and they, you know, they live out of the thing for, you know, four five, six hours. Kind of thing. So I thought that was, that was kind of neat. Um, but yeah, island living, dude, right? Totally island living. Uh, Daniel says, your voice comes and goes, for lack of a better term. Thank you very much for that. Uh, because of that, what I will do is, uh, is try and get rid of some of the gating. I know exactly why that's happening, actually. And uh, I was doing that because um, I was trying to get rid of, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the noise. And uh, so I have this, this filter on here that I only usually use for my white microphone, which, as you know, I get uh, really, 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 really close to. So hopefully now it's not cutting out in as, uh, cutting in and out as much. Um, if it is, then just let me know, uh, and I can uh, absolutely turn that stuff down, because as you guys know, it bugs me. But thank you, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Um, the mic is too directional, says Rockman. Yeah, it is. It is kind of. Good morning, nice view. Side Trip Life. You guys, have you guys seen Side Trip Life's... Um, Side Trip Life's channel, that guy is great. Um, he does some wonderful videos. And the reason that I know of Pratrap Curry Khan, and the reason that I went down there, and the reason that I stayed where I stayed, was, and the way I went down there, is because of his videos. Because of the train, because of the first hotel, because of the second hotel. Um, and uh, the only thing I, I like to think that was like kind of new uh, was the fact that Gracie and I walked all the way up to the top of uh, Monkey Temple, right? And well, we did it at 3 in the afternoon when it was 1,000 degrees outside. Uh, but all 396 steps. So. so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, but anyway, if the, if, if the gating, basically, um, of, the, of the mic is bugging you guys, then I can absolutely turn it off. Um, for example, all, all I have, have to do is, is go like this. Um, and then effectively it's gonna it's not gonna filter anything and it's gonna pick up uh, everything so uh, you let me know if that's better or worse or if you would like me to go back to the other one I'm more than happy to do that um, for sure um, because I got zero filters on this thing right now and uh, and sadly the only way for me to uh, side trip up hey you're absolutely welcome um, I would love to meet up with you by the way um, I know that you live in Bangkok and you travel around uh, but I also realize and, and totally respect and appreciate the fact that your videos have you in it never. <laughs> uh, so you're just like doing the, in contrast to mine. <laughs> uh, so if you're not like, you know, if you don't want to meet with people, that's fine. And um, Go More Hike says I'm almost asleep. Very nice. Mm. Oh, you're getting more wind, Todd? 
Sorry about that. Um, good day, stuck in Florida. Oh, cool. I just see you down there. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming by. That's really awesome. I really appreciate it. I love when the, uh, well, the core team comes by. And uh, it's interesting because the wind, I thought that maybe the wind screens on this microphone would pull it out. Ten percent of whatever. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so that is the microphone that's going in there, and then let me go up to the filters. Uh, and let me change. Um, change a little bit of the, uh, bring the threshold of the compressor down. I'll only do about six to one with it, and I'll bring it down to minus 30 dB. So I should be pulling in a little bit. The expander, I'm not really, actually, I don't even really need that. Um, and in fact, I'll, uh, I'll dive back the expander to like 4.7. So, plenty of luck. It's not too, uh, too crazy bonkers. Oh my God, I know it's not going to sting me. It's just going to bug me, you know? It's just like, man. Um, better. Okay, Grockman, thanks, man. Um, yeah, the downside to this is I don't have like a, uh, I can't monitor what it sounds like until later. <laughs> um, I need an ear headset. Yeah, I've tried those. They're pretty good. This microphone um, I bought uh, a while ago. I prefer, of course, uh, the microphones that I have at my condo. Um, and the small black one, occasionally I will travel with that, and sometimes I'll even travel with the mixer. Um, but uh, my first few live streams, actually, that I did when I was down in Papua, um, I brought my little uh, Behringer mixer and my, my microphones with me, uh, and even the mic boom, actually, just attached it to the table. So don't forget to hit the like button, everybody. Thank you, Stuck in Florida. I think you're, that's like, you say that a lot, man. Thank you. Yeah, that bug was totally doing a cameo, and um, and I'm not rolling credits on him either. There's no way. I mean, he's not SAG after, so there's no way I'm paying his union dues just for coming on the screen for that long. But uh, someone mentioned lack of electric cars charging uh, in Thailand. Did a bit on that uh, EA Anywhere site shows 750 charge points. Yeah, no, that's actually a good point. So he did a – it was basically a, it was a car show, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he should, and where well, they weren't just electric, it was also self-driving, right? I mean, the, the BMWs, I believe that you, uh, did the video on where it was self-driving. Um, you know, I don't know if you, and, and, and if anyone's ever told you this, I'm guessing they did side trip. Um, but you don't put out enough videos, but the videos you do put out, oh my God, dude, you get like tens of thousands of views. And so congratulations. It's really awesome. Now the quality is of course, excellent. I mean, it's not like it's unfounded success uh, or unwarranted rather but uh but yeah i was just looking at that going god this guy i mean because sometimes you won't do a video for like a whole i mean you probably have like a you know, full-time job those pesky things but um anyway uh you're <laughs> it's good bush no i know what you meant. yeah no, that's cool um Go more hikes. I say, have you been to Rayong? There is a great resort there, uh, Buntam and Shui Resort. Call for reservations. Yeah, if you're talking about the one that is Ross's, um, I tried to, and it was fully booked when I was down there the other day. I was down in Rayong only for one night because I went to Rayong to then catch the ferry from Bampei uh, over to, um, excuse me. Um, over to Cosumet. Cosumet is closed. None of the ferries are running, so that what that's what brought me back up here. But uh, but yeah, Rayong's okay. I mean, the beach was like it wasn't ugly, um, and there were ones that were better than others. Um, where I was staying, it was kind of away from stuff to the point where like the hotel didn't even know where I could rent a motorbike. And I'm like, what? This is Thailand, dude. Everyone that was kind of weird. Um, I mean, they were more than willing to call me a taxi. It was like almost a Lexus. It was like these brand new giant Toyota and uh and you know because they I'm, oh actually no I was going to say they don't have Lexus brand over there here they do I've actually seen Lexus cars they don't have Acura over here and they don't have Infinity so they don't have the standard USA luxury brands um of the Japanese of the Japanese manufacturers but uh 
anyway. So uh, the only drawback I see about Thailand is the cobras. Am I wrong? I have not seen one. I don't know where they exist. Um, I've never seen a cobra, so that's that's a bummer, I guess. That if you've uh, if you've seen them, and um, and they've bothered you, that's that's really weird. Daniel says, I thought you said uh, in a previous video that the monkeys in Thailand are territorial. I saw another vlogger go up a hill somewhere in Thailand, and monkeys were everywhere. They didn't attack, um, act aggressive. Uh, it's been my experience that they pretty much. I mean, they'll look at you. Um, every now and then I get one that, you know, they do the showing teeth thing, but no, for the most part, like wherever I've been, um, I mean, you know, the, we, Gracie and I were at this place actually just north of Bang Sien and, uh, and you go up this hill and it's referred to as monkey hill, but you drive up there and like the, 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 the pastime, <laughs> because like literally there's, there's this like one part after another at the bottom of this hill and they all like literally sit there and they wave at everybody that's going by and they're selling bananas and they're selling fruit, and they're selling snacks and things for monkeys. So people literally, as they're going up this hill, they stop their car on the side of the road, and people come out, and they buy all this fruit, and they go all the way to the top. And again, it's so common that as you're driving your car up there, I mean, the, the monkeys, they, they just jump right on your car. And they're like, okay, well, we expect you to roll the window down and give us food, dude. I mean, like, they, stand, they, they stand on the hood. They look at you in the window like this, you know, to see, like, how you're motioning. Like, are you going to open this window? Or are you going to open this window? Um, I haven't seen them like you know attack the wipers or you know bang on the door or anything like that. But you know they're like okay, well if I if I stand on top of this car, the last time I did this I got fed. I'll do it again, right? Um, but no, I've never had any sort of really uh, aggressive. I will I will shy away when they seem to be territorial with their own kind. <laughs> um, I mean I've seen them you know like scream at each other and you know attack each other or whatever. But Gracie and I have been driving down the road and all of a sudden like three or four of them are fighting in front of us. And I just kind of, I just give it wide berth. I don't know why I just thought of that. Um, anyway, yeah, I haven't had it. I haven't had an issue with it. Suck says, Captain Photon, that's one of the pluses of some, for some of us. Uh, I will check out Side Truth Life. I completely, completely recommend it. Rackman, thank you so, thank you very much, my friend. 20 people, 23 thumbs up, there's zero thumbs down. Who knew? Who knew? Um, and uh, cheers, Captain Pota. Really stuck in Florida. You are pulling my chain. I grew up with rattlesnakes and still want no part of cobras. Yeah. There you go more hike. Rayong um, is the city to be with my woman and my kids and my dogs and me over at the burial. Oh, really? Okay. Right. Awesome. Good, good for you. That's a sounds like a good plan. Um, Rackman says no Acura or Lexus car luxury brands in Japan either. Oh, interesting. I mean, that's where they're from. <laughs> So that's that that's very interesting. Is Japan then similar to Thailand as far as Japanese cars go? Meaning that what's the biggest car that Act Accord makes? That Accord makes. That Honda makes. I believe it's the Accord. If you have like a decked out Accord over here, like top of the line Accord, you know, with all of the extra, you know, shiny stuff and everything, that's a fairly luxury car over here. So is that the same in uh in Japan where like a luxury uh Accord is, you know, Seen as like a, well, it, they see it as a luxury. In other words, they see it as probably we view a Lexus in the United States. Um, I'd be curious about that. So really, so I mean, how many? I wonder how many countries then, like Acura and Lexus. Now, Lexus, obviously, I have seen Lexus in 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 Bangkok. I was actually very surprised at that, and I think it was the SUVs that I saw. I don't believe I saw a sedan, but I can't remember. Now they're not prevalent. What I am amazed at actually is that Volvo has cars. Over I was like, that really seems really sort of interesting. Um, I didn't think that would be a big bit. Now, obviously, uh, MG is big over here. Uh, MG was big in um, Bermuda. There's MGs everywhere, which makes an easy swim over to get it. <laughs> um, and uh, not easy, but you know what I mean. The, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other brands that are over here that I don't necessarily. Well, I mean, there's, there's versions. Right. So in other words, the Civic, kind of, the smaller Civic over here is the City. Uh, the Fit is actually identical. Like the Fit here is the Fit back in the U.S. I love the little Fits. Those are, those are really cool. I believe I also saw a version of a Honda that's even smaller than the Fit. I think it's called like the Bree or the Pre or the B-R-E-E -E or P-R-E, something like that. That's kind of interesting how, you know, I mean, every country has their own digital, right? Um, 
Aztec says the monkeys in uh, Ubud Bali are awful. Steal all your things, jump all over you tourists. Um, have turned them into thugs. Well, that's too bad. I mean, that's too bad that they like attack the humans. That's not good. I mean, I can understand like I leave my bag on my motorbike and they come over and they start looking for it. Okay, whatever. But to like actually physically, you know, want to get close to the human, and that's weird that they're that comfortable with it. But they're attacking. That's that's a drag. Stuck says Captain the Fo two Captain the Photon. I actually travel to look for snakes and cobras are amazing to me. But they are something to be aware of, especially the spitting cobra. Agreed. Not a big fan of the snakes. Gracie does not like snakes. Um, Daniel says we're only two DNA strands away from being relatives. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> Very true. Side Trip Life says, Mike, you're a techie, right? Plus a Thai vlogger. I'm launching a site to help Thai vloggers and soon sending beta test invites can include you. I would be absolutely honored. Um, anything I can do to help you, dude, uh, please let me know. Um, and uh, I'm psyched to learn more about it. Absolutely psyched to learn more about it. If you want to share more of it on here with these guys, I bet they'd have interest in it too. Feel free. But if not, then that's fine. Uh, Captain says, cool, stock of Florida. You know what you were doing then, yeah. M.A. Aloha. Oh, my battery's running low. See, I wondered how long this would take. How long have we been streaming, guys? Um, mm, let's see. I mean, I, oh, I'd have to go over to, I can go over to Restream and find out how long we've been streaming. Um, but in any case, my battery's running low, which basically means that the laptop is going to die. I don't have the ability, there's no electricity around here, so I can't plug in anything. So, um... NSX in Japan is Honda. Oh, ah, I say I got it, yeah. Because uh, they have the Acura NSX, right? That like crazy low, I mean, it almost looks like a kit car. Three meter Cobras near my, near my west of Bangkok. Wow. Um, anyway, so guys, I'm going to stop it there. And I'm going to say, oh my God, thank you so much for coming by. I'm really psyched that we did this. I'm honored that, that, uh, that all of you guys are here. And I'm, and I'm really, thank you so much for um, 76 minutes. That's not too bad. Um, side trip life. Thank you for coming by, my friend. I really, uh, I hope we can connect. I just, you know, again, all of the data that you've provided on the uh, videos that I've seen has made my life happy. So there you go. Anyways, Mike's from LiveMyAssOff.com saying, I hope you're living the dream. Because if you're not living the dream, then potentially you have a smaller, even cheaper, lousier laptop than I do, and it can only do 75 minutes of live streaming. Thanks for coming by, guys. Be well. Ciao.